This amazing antique store in Copenhagen is called Fille de Fer, and everything in it is imported straight from France. Hello friends and welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is BJ. My business is called Junked Up. I'm a furniture painter. I'm also an American living in Copenhagen. And in this video, I am bringing you a project where I was inspired by a beautiful, crackly, old finish that I saw in an amazing store full of French antiques. I was basically swooning and drooling over every single thing that was in there, but everything was way, way, way out of my budget. It was super pricey. Things in Copenhagen are expensive anyway, let alone things imported from France. I found this table on Facebook Marketplace for around 30 US dollars and we brought it home on the Metro. It needed just a little bit of repair. I had to re-glue some of the legs to tighten them up and I was ready to start my project. I do want to interject here for just a second because when you get to the end of the video and you see the finished product, I don't want you to think, oh, BJ, you stink. You're not a very good furniture painter because it doesn't look anything like the inspiration photo that you showed us. But inspiration is a funny thing, and I wasn't after copying the finish that I saw. I really was inspired by just the whole ambiance of the store that I was in. I'm inspired by a lot of the colors that I see here in and around Copenhagen. Um, there was a particular light fixture in this beautiful store full of French antiques that I quite frankly couldn't afford. And it was this amazing mint green color and I knew that DIY paint mint chip was going to be my answer. And so I kind of incorporated a bunch of different things that I saw into one piece. After giving my piece a base coat of sandy blonde, which was just one coat, it was time to add some color. I chose aviary and gypsy green. So while the aviary is still wet, I went ahead and added the gypsy green. So I'm kind of layering and blending all at the same time. I'm not looking for any kind of uniform blending. I just want these two colors to kind of mix in some places and not mix in others. So for the distressing, I decided to try a couple different tools to achieve what I was going for. First I used that large old shoe shine brush and then I switched to my cabinet scraper for some more aggressive distressing. Then I decided to distress using a chip brush, which you probably think I'm crazy, but using a chip brush and some water and kind of rubbing aggressively gave me a really nice distress. I really liked the way that this turned out and it was perfect for the band around the top of the table. After 
After trying to use the chip brush to distress the legs, I decided it was too big of a space for me to really do that and I wasn't getting what I wanted, so I switched back to my shoe shine brush and that was perfect. And you'll notice that I'm rather aggressive with my distressing. So I knew I definitely wanted some crackling on this piece. I'm using a product that I got here in Europe, but for those of you in the States, you can use Artisan Enhancements Crackle Text and it works great. medium works is you apply it in between coats of paint and as the top coat of paint dries your crackles come out. I'm using a hair dryer to kind of speed things along a little bit and the thing with crackling is you don't want to keep going over it with your paint. You just got to do one coat, one pass and then let it go otherwise you're going to fill in your crackles. I'm distressing my piece again. I used a combination of a wet distress using a cloth and kind of a wet distress but using my cabinet scraper. The thing that I found was that as I sprayed my table and used my cabinet scraper, I was kind of reactivating that crackle medium and I was able to pull off larger chunks of paint, giving me a more authentic finish. I want to interject again, if I may, and a lot of my videos are I'm just winging it because I'm just like you are and I don't always know what my outcome is going to be and I really just have to roll with it and so a lot of it is just kind of mm, getting into my mind a little bit and just seeing how I do things. It isn't always right, it isn't always pretty, it isn't always the shortest or most effective way to do things, but I'm sharing it with you in hopes that maybe you'll be inspired to try a new product or a new tool or just, just be inspired to think a little bit outside the box and not be afraid to push the boundaries of what you normally do. I'm finishing my project up using wax. I knew I wanted to use dark wax to enhance the texture and the crackles that I created, but it's important to put the clear wax on first so I'm not totally staining my project. For a project like this, when I'm using the dark wax to really enhance a lot of texture, I find it easier when I apply my clear wax, really let that dry for a couple hours, and then I go back and I apply my dark wax. For something like this, there are sections like on the bottom of the leg here where I applied the dark wax and just gently wiped it back. And then there are other parts of the project where after applying the, the dark wax, I went back over it with a little clear wax and that really pulls out the texture.
You can really see it here when I'm applying the clear wax over that dark wax. You can see how it takes away all of the dark wax that's just kind of sitting on top and leaves it in all of the texture and the crackles, and that's exactly what I wanted. After I'm done applying all the wax, I like to let it sit overnight. I come back the next day, I buff it with a soft cloth, and then I am left with a beautiful finish. So thank you so much for watching. If you would hit that like button if you found this video at all interesting and then stay with me as I continue on my journey of junk in here in Copenhagen and bringing you some really cool projects. See you next time. Bye.